Good morning, welcome back to Wilder Hope Adventures. Um, we are in the little town of Balcom, St. Mary's Church. Uh, we're doing one of the walks into history um, Sussex book today. Uh, so we're going to go by Balcom Reservoir, Ardingly Reservoir, um, and we're going to go see one of the greatest feats of engineering, which is the Balcom Viaduct that carries the London to Brighton line. Um, short seven and a half, eight mile walk, I think. And uh, hope you enjoy coming on with us. So that beautiful area we just uh, walked through is Balcom Park. Uh, it used to be Highley Manor, which has since been demolished. Um, it was set out in the 14th century as a deer park by, I think it was the Duke of Norfolk. Um, so lots of history through here. It's an absolutely beautiful area. Um, so much history around here, which is one of the things I love about these walks. It tells you all about it. So you're know, walking through the woodland, um, at the bottom of the Deer Park and coming down to Balcom Reservoir. So here we are, we're at Balcom Reservoir. Uh, it looks extremely natural. Um, this was actually a fishing lake created for Highley Manor. Um, despite that, it is a beautiful area uh, and well used for fishing still and boating and other recreational activities around the area. We're just coming up on the head of Ardingly Reservoir and man, it is empty. I don't think I've ever seen it quite this empty. So Ardingly Reservoir was constructed in 1978 to fulfill two purposes. Um, one for, uh, you know, water supply to surrounding towns, villages, um, and now supplies all across East and West Sussex. Um, the second purpose for it, and probably more important at the time, was to uh, control the river flow, flow in the River Ouse. Um, England does not rely on snowpack, it relies on rainfall. Um, so these reservoirs are vital for keeping some of these rivers flowing and healthy. Uh, so when in drought seasons, when we don't have the rainfall, these rivers dry up, we lose a lot of habitat, a lot of animals that um, you know we wouldn't want to lose. So it's definitely a conservation thing. 
It was created by flooding 78 hectares of land um, with building a dam wall. It's um, of an earth berm construction and uh, covers, uh, I think it's 191 soccer fields equivalent, which means it's, it's quite large and it's well used in, for many, many things, not just water supply, control in the river flow down at the River Ouse, but also well used for educational purposes. Uh, I've seen people learning at, out on the water how to canoe and kayak, windsurf, uh, angling, and uh, stand up paddle boarding. So very, very useful to the wide and local community. So Ardingly Reservoir can be found, um, it's on, located on the High Weald um, in the High Weald area of Outstanding Natural Beauty and it's actually a designated nature reserve. Um, so it's, it's protected species, you can see things like kingfishers, speckled white butterflies, dormice um, and a huge variety of other things. I, unfortunately I cannot remember them all but um, those were the highlights that we saw on the board back there. Um, so I like trying to keep out for these things. I've actually never seen a kingfisher and that would be absolutely amazing to see. So, um, unfortunately the water's not very clear right now so the chances of seeing one are pretty small because it's so low the trees are not overhanging the, the edge. So we've left uh, Ardingly Reservoir behind. It's getting quite busy. It's getting to that time of day when people are coming out. Um, running out kayaks um, to spend the day, it's bank holiday weekend, so uh, we're just stopping for a snack. Um, it's not super, super late, I think it's about 9.30. Uh, just got some, some cheese um, and rich crackers um, and I think a chocolate bar too. So we're just going to top up. Um, we should be getting to where we uh, can see the, the viaduct here shortly, which is it's quite a, a piece of engineering. It's absolutely beautiful too. Uh, of course, back a couple of hundred years ago, they actually knew how to build things that were pretty and not just functional. Okay, look, we're just getting our first glimpses of the viaduct here. On uh, 80 feet high at its highest point, uh, crosses the River Ouse, which divides the High Weald with the South Downs. following the River Ouse down from the viaduct. Um, just walking through some cattle pastures. Haven't really run into any cattle on this walk, but I know that they're in here, one field. But that was it and they pretty much ignored us. But we're following the River Ouse. We're just starting to come up to the, to the viaduct, which because I can hear it, can't currently see it. Um, but definitely not as impressive through here. Very small river, almost a creek through here. Uh, when compared to what we saw down at South Seas on the South Downs. So what you're seeing behind me is the Balcom Viaduct. Um, we're only seeing a small portion of it here. Um, but as I think you would agree that it is a very pretty piece of engineering. It was definitely a feat for its age, uh, or for the time that it was built. Um, 
which I believe was 1837, I'll double check that. Um, and it was actually built or designed by a, a basically self-taught, self-educated engineer. Um, we'll get a little bit more into the details of uh, how this was built, what it was built for. The London and Brighton Railway Company was launched to link the growing resort of Brighton to the capital. Unlike many railway schemes, there was sound commercial reasoning behind this one, and the completion of the line in 1842 ensured Brighton's place as one of England's leading holiday destinations. The viaduct was designed in 1842 by John Urpeth Rastrick. 37 arches carry the track 1,475 feet across the valley and 80 feet up at the highest point. The viaduct was the most ambitious piece of railway engineering in Sussex and one of the longest viaducts in England. Cane limestone was imported to face the brickwork and architect David Makata was employed to add aesthetic touches such as the classical balustrade and the mock Grecian pagodas on each end. Wow, holy crap, that was nuts. That is so busy down there by the viaduct. Um, it's a shame, you're actually not supposed to get off the path, it is all private land, but a whole lot of disrespect going on there. Um, you know, it's just, you can probably hear them in the background right now, lots of kids screaming, getting off and trespassing, which is a shame. Um, you can see that there used to be a fence there. It does say don't cross the fence. It does warn there's possible danger, but people just don't seem to listen. You know, that's all they think about sometimes is themselves and what they want to do. So kind of a shame because it will ruin it for a lot of other people. So uh, anyway, we're heading on. We're starting our trek back to the car. Um, definitely hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'm really glad I got to come out and do this short hike today. Um, it was definitely a struggle to get myself out of the house this morning. I was actually supposed to be on the Pedro's Way starting Saturday. I was it until Sunday because of the weather. Um, but I got about a quarter of the way there, maybe an hour out of my house. Just had a big mental block. Didn't want to be there. Felt really uneasy. It was just not something I wanted to be doing in that moment, and I have no idea why. Um, I do occasionally have those. Usually I can work through, and once I'm out, I'm fine, but I actually forced myself to get in the car, load the car, load my pack, and actually go, but once I was out, I was still feeling that very intense sense of uneasiness, being uncomfortable. Um, so I ended up turning around and coming home. So it was important for me to get out in some way this weekend just to get past that uh, feeling of uh, just really a little bit of a struggle there so glad we did this I feel really good about doing it I feel much more positive today um, about this but still feeling glad that I actually didn't go uh, heard some news last night that or about Saturday night that there was a, an illegal rave out in Thetford Forest uh, which would have been right where I would have been. So maybe my sense of uneasiness and delay paid off. So anyway, thanks for joining us on this trail. Even if it's short, maybe not as interesting as some of my other videos. Um, but just to let you know, this community is here to support you, to support everybody in finding your adventure. And that's not just about the big ones. It's about the little ones. It's about the being able to step outside your door and actually progressing and improving um, and making even small changes. So, and that's what this community is. That's what I want it to be. I want you to be involved. I want to hear from you, hear your comments, hear your thoughts um, to make this something special. I just came across this really cool rock formation cliff behind us. Um, 
don't know any of the history of it or anything like that. I'll have to see if I can find some, but it looks like a rock climber's dream, even if it's a sh short wall.